And in three, two, one, hello, my dear sweet little chickadees. It is me, Cole, your resident astrologer, first Mudge Wellness, bringing you another horoscope, this time for the month of April. And I don't know if you can see this, but I'm wearing my Gryffindor shirt because April has a shit ton of magic to present to us. Um, I'm really excited about this month because I think there's a lot of really amazing things. It's going to like lift the weight off of all of our shoulders, in particular, just with all of the transits that we have going on. I mean, it's just stunning, beautiful, iconic, legendary stuff. Um, and it starts off the month with a new moon. When I think about the theme of the month being bloom, it makes me think about, okay, we are all little flowers, right? Just waiting to show all our colors and to allow ourselves to you know be the most beautiful magnificent part of ourselves how are we potentially limiting ourselves from doing that and how are we you know not allowing ourselves right, to soak in all the sunlight so that we can bloom and so that we can open up but i think there's a lot of potential in april for us to really get into all of that beautiful blooming magical energy so without further ado let's dive into the transit <laughs> First transit we've got is happening on April 1st. This is the new moon in Aries, conjunct Mercury and conjunct Chiron. The things that I want us to think about is how can we harness our inner power, our inner strength, our inner warrior, Aries energy. But thinking about Mercury and Chi Chiron, within, which are in such a close conjunction, how can we verbalize, vocalize, you know, articulate uh, a sense of accountability for the healing that we want to see in our life. As opposed to being like, woe is me, we're saying, no, this is what I want to see change, and here's how I'm going to make it change. Aries, new moon. It's all about new beginnings. At the beginning of the month, there's a limitless possibility. Go listen to the song um, Unstoppable by Sia, and you'll know what I mean. On the fourth, we have Mars conjunct Saturn in Aquarius. Are you putting in the work? Are you putting in the work, right? That's what I want you to ask yourself. Are you putting in the authentic expression of yourself? Are you allowing yourself to define success as it pertains to you, right? Or whatever success that everyone else is saying. Mars conjunct Saturn creates a really good sense of ambition for us to get our projects done, but to sit down and say, here's the game plan as to how I want to get those projects done. On the fifth, Venus moves into Pisces. Ah, oh, this is so beautiful. Venus in Pisces is the exaltation of Venus, right? It allows us to open our hearts and it allows to open our creative minds to a more fluid expression, a more empathetic and sympathetic and just emotional connection to other people. I'm really excited about Venus in Pisces because Venus is going to be approaching Jupiter, it's going to be approaching Neptune, and it creates this beautiful opportunity for us to open up our hearts and our minds and our spirits to connecting more authentically and more genuinely with other people. On April 10th, Mercury moves into Taurus. This is great because we have all this Aries energy going on right now, especially Aries Mercury, which is like... Blah, 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 blah. But then once it moves into Taurus, it allows us to slow down, be a little bit more grounded, be a little bit more serious, and be a little bit more practical. This practicality we can bring through with our communication and our thoughts. So I'm very excited about Mercury moving into Taurus. On April 12th, we have the humongous, exciting conjunction between Jupiter and Neptune in the sign of Pisces. Holy fucking shit. Is this a big deal? Why? The planet of growth, expansion, next to the planet of spirituality, intuition, glamour, in the sign of all of those things, right? In the sign of Pisces? This transit is super magical and it's the big ticket magic moment because it allows us to push our dreams, our manifestations, our spiritual awakenness, right? It wants us to grow and it wants us to lean into what our spirit is telling us, right? And how our spirit wants us to guide us. I want you to be really, really conscientious about what your spiritual practice and your spiritual routine is towards the middle of April. And how can you really make sure that you're not just getting complacent with it, but that you're actually trying to advance your knowledge, advance your higher being and advance that, you know, that push. On April 14th, we have Mars entering Pisces. Okay, Mars and Pisces, not as glamorous because it is going to make us a little bit more slow, possibly a little bit more lethargic, a little bit more like, ooh, okay, let me just vibe out, right? I don't really want to do it. I don't really want to get it done, but that's okay, right? Because Mars is the action planet and Pisces wants us to be a little bit more reflective, take that time to just reflect, 
to indulge, just be a little bit more emotionally driven as opposed to Mars and Aquarius, which is like, am I doing the right thing? Blah, 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 right? This is, this is a nice time just to sort of sit back and relax and just to, to ride that wave quite literally. On the 16th, we have a full moon in the sign of Libra that realization of what relationships mean to us, right? What we deserve in relationships, how we want to be connected to other people. I really love this because it also allows us to have that illumination, right? And come to that point of like, okay, cool, work, closure type stuff as it pertains to the balance and harmony in our life. This full moon, I think, is going to allow us to find that balance in particular with all of the magic going on between the spiritual and the practical, right? You know, the, the metaphysical world and the physical world. I'm really excited about this full moon. So leading up to it, ask yourself the questions, right? Where can I find that beautiful balance in the relationship that I have with the spiritual world and with my physical world? Then also thinking about the connections with, you know, your relationships to others, but then also your relationship to yourself. On the 18th, it's a quick little ditty, but Mercury and Uranus are going to go conjunct in the sign of Tur Taurus. This is like super mental stimulation. This is like, blah, 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 what's going on in my mind? I want to do something new. I'm feeling a little bit jittery as if I need to say something or I want to think something or I want to, you know, just, just be like Uranus. You know, it, it can cause our minds to just stir and like really be in this rapid state of mind. Um, so, you know, just expect that the 18th might just be a little, little twitchy, like a little bit, ooh, well, there's worms crawling all over my body type energy. Um, but then also that mental sort of push to do something. And with this transit, just give yourself the ability to, you know, journal or write or, uh, you know, possibly like start a new project, anything like that. On the 19th, happy Taurus season. Ah, uh, very excited for Taurus season because I can, I'm already kind of tired from Aries season. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I love Aries season, but I'm kind of like, okay, can we slow down and just relax for a second? <laughs> and I think Taurus season is going to bring that for all of us. On April 27th, Venus and Neptune go conjunct in the sign of Pisces. Oh, what a dreamy and reflective vibe does this transit have, right? It's, it's saying, how can we really, you know, further the expansiveness and, the, you know, that sense of collective love and that sort of collective unity? How can we dream bigger? How can we allow ourselves to create more? However, Neptune is like super glamorous, right? It's like that, you know, it's like that drama. It's like, you know, it's the Oscars. It's, you know, reality TV, everything like that. Um, so make sure that you're not over glamorizing any sort of relationships or any sort of like indulgent patterns in your life. On the 29th, Mercury moves into Gemini. <gasps> Let's have a kiki. I want to have a kiki. Lock the doors tight, right? That's what I thought of when I literally wrote that down in my notes. <laughs> um, Mercury in Gemini. Mercury's at home in Gemini, right? So we have this like slower communicative, slower thought, more relaxed, right? You know, take it slow with Taurus Mercury. But now with Mercury in Gemini, we want to socialize again. We want to think again. We want to share our thoughts. We want to listen to music. We want to get out there to a park and just have fun with other people. Um, so I'm really excited that we end the month uh, with Mercury in Gemini. And last but not least, on the 30th, we have a solar eclipse in the sign of Taurus. Whoa! Okay, this is a new moon in Taurus, but because the North and the South Node are on the Taurus-Scorpio axis, that makes it eclipse season. We're entering eclipse season, baby. Um, this new moon is also sextile Mars and conjunct Uranus, though this is really about saying, am I ready to put in the work to do something new? Am I ready to put in the work to say, I'm tired of not doing it for myself, right? You know, mess with the bull gets the horn, Taurus energy, being guided by someone else. I'm ready to indulge in my own desires and what makes me feel secure and what I value. So this solar eclipse is going to be real juicy. All right, let's get into a sign by sign horoscope for the month of April. Make sure to really look at your rising sign for this one in particular, because I want to talk about all of the energy leading up to the eclipse, which is happening at the end of the month for each of the signs. So let's start off with Aries. Aries, the eclipse is happening in your second house in the sign of Taurus, right? A solar eclipse in the sign of Taurus in your second house, which is really creating this sort of um, conversation to say like, what are the new beginnings towards what I value, right? And my senses and how I can be more present. You get this opportunity with all the planets in Pisces, right? You know, starting to move from Aquarius into Pisces. And then all the planets that already exist in Aries to say, 
reflectively, how am I more self-aware of what I want, how I present, and how I view the world, and how can I start creating a foundation in order to make that more solidified? Taurus, the eclipse is happening in your first house. Oh my gosh, you get to reintroduce yourself to the world, right? You really get to have this beautiful awakening and say, everything leading up to the end of the month is an opportunity for me to be reflectively aware of how I fit into the social context of everyone around me, right? And take that time to retreat so that when I reintroduce myself, it is an iconic, stunning, and beautiful moment. Gemini, ooh, this eclipse is going to be a tough one for you, Gemini Risings, because it is happening in the 12th house. But, I mean, Gemini, you are so practical and so logical and very, very communicative. But the 12th house is all about that sense of spirituality. Are you ready to enter into this journey and enter into this opportunity, which is going to allow you to step outside of yourself, right? And step into a more spiritually reflective routine, right? Taurus is a with a fixed earth sign. It wants you to have a sense of routine with everything you do. Cancers! Oh, very excited about this cancer energy because... One, cancers are naturally of service to everyone in their life, but with the eclipse happening in the 11th house, you get to think about that, that, that natural goal orientation towards how can others be more of service to you, right? More of assistance to you to achieve what you actually want. You've got this really interesting growth going on in your career, right? And with, you know, the ninth house energy, which is pushing your mind, but who are those people who are, you know, guiding you along and helping you with that and are ready and are you ready to start those new relationships to get to those points? Leo! Oh, Leo Risings, if you want to start a new job, now's the time, right? Start out, start applying, start interviewing, start getting out there. I mean, yes, the career isn't just our, or the, the, the 10th house isn't just our career. It is what we present to the world, right? And the gift that we get to offer to the world. But guess what? We live in a capitalist society. So we do have to really contextualize it to like, how do I show up? And what is my mark that I get to place on the universe right now? So you, Leo Risings, have this amazing opportunity to really push all of this transformative learning into a like, you know, a juicy bit of, you know, career opportunity and new potential for you. Virgos, this entire opportunity is going to be about pushing yourself to grow, right? And pushing yourself to expand and pushing yourself to take intimate learnings and intimate connections and, you know, the relationships you have and take them to this, you know, wiser, um, more expansive level, right? I'm a Virgo rising. So I'm really thinking about how can I now learn from all the interactions, right? And am I taking away all those bits of wisdom as opposed to just just being social with people, right? You really get to think about how your relationships can now push you to grow because we have the seventh house through this ninth house energy. Libras, you get to just intimately change and transform your relationships. You really get to think about the connections that you have with others, how much effort you put into them, but how much effort they put back into you. The, 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 um, the new moon, the solar eclipse is happening in your eighth house. You have so much energy in your sixth and your seventh house. So you're really thinking about how am I transforming through, you know, the gifts and service that I do in my relationships, but how are those relationships transforming, you know, me, right? By giving me what I need in return. So really thinking about that give and take and the connections with others. Scorpios! Seventh house, solar eclipse. Yes, baby! Scorpio Risings have been asking me for a while now, when am I going to get a relationship? There's this beautiful opportunity for you too at the end of the month, but what you have to think about is that inner self-care, right? And what does romantic expression look like for you? And how can that, right, help you be a better partner for others? Being in a relationship isn't just about having those, you know, mushy, mushy moments. It's about pushing someone else to grow and to advance. So you, Scorpios, get to think about what am I ready to provide romantically and then in terms of a day-to-day -day service routine in order to be the best partner that I can so that I can not only help someone grow, but they can help me grow in return. Sagittarius's, ooh, what are you doing, right? What is your routine looking like? Are you just feeling too scattered and too, you know, chaotic right now? I actually just talked to a, <laughs> a Sagittarius rising in one of my readings. And it, it was this entire conversation of 
how are you putting forth the effort, right? You know, for yourself, you know, are you focusing too much on the home, right? Are you giving yourself enough creative freedom, right? Do you have enough of that like diligence in order to actually get what you want to have done completed? So think about that Sagittarius, really look at your routine over this next month. Capricorns, just romantic and creative connection, really, and, and thinking about you know, Capricorn risings, you can be a little bit, uh, a little bit quiet and a little bit reserved sometimes, but you've got a lot of third house and a lot of fourth house energy, which is saying, hello, how can we communicate and how can we, 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 you know, tap into our subconscious in order to have this really romantic connection, but also this creative expression at the same time. This new moon is going to potentially create opportunities, right? And create this openness for you to really, really allow the self to express in an authentic way. Aquariuses, ah, you know, if Aquarius has wanted to move, I wouldn't say no, Aquarius risings, because uh, the solar eclipse going on in the uh, the fourth house. But thinking about, you know, the value add that that provides and the way that you think about how you want to create a home, right, and create a family and create that foundation for yourself to be secure, something that's really important leading up to this solar eclipse, because I think it's going to create opportunity for you to expand, do something new, redefine the security, all of that great stuff. And Pisces, 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 say what you need to say, say what you need to say right? You know, it, it, the, the solar eclipse is going to be happening in your third house. You get to learn more, communicate more, do more as it pertains to what your definition of what you want to learn and do, right? You know, speak your truth, take accountability, right? What, what do you know about yourself and what do you value about yourself and how can you now start sharing that with others, but still having that open-mindedness in order to learn from others as well. So with all that being said, all of my lovely chickadees, thank you so much for watching. If you want more content on spiritual wellness, tarot, astrology, anything like that, make sure to check us out on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, all of the good social medias at Smudge Wellness. And I will see you next time. Send you all so much love.